Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to chapter 15 on page 129. Jesus heals a young girl, a scripture story. I want you, as always, to take a moment to look at the stained glass and look at Jesus and raising the little girl, healing her. And I think that is a pretty representation of, of what that story is about. But as always, boys and girls, we start with a prayer. We pray, the Lord hears when I call out. God, God our, our Father, show our sick brothers, brothers and sisters the power of your loving care. care. Amen. Amen. This is a question for you boys and girls. What are some things that cause people to suffer? What are some things that cause people to suffer? I think one of the most obvious things that cause people to suffer is uh, sickness. Um, sickness is cause people to suffer. It doesn't matter the form, whether they are minor or they are major, they cause people to suffer. Uh, you also think about poverty, uh, when people don't have the basic things they need, they suffer. Um, you think of bad leadership, those things make people to suffer. We all know people who have been sick or have suffered in some way. The Bible has many stories about people who suffered. What does the Bible tell us about God when we are suffering? What does the Bible tell us about God when we are suffering? Something to think about, but also something to um, uh, look at now. Uh, the Bible gives us different uh, things, says different things about God's approach when we are suffering. But ultimately, the Bible tells us that God loves us and cares about us. And when we are suffering, God is very concerned. And that was why God sent Jesus to us. So God cares. And that is uh, what God does when we are suffering. He cares. He comes to us to see how to end our suffering. I will now turn it over to Mrs. Stever to tell us something about suffering in the Bible. Bible background, page 130. Okay, boys and girls, check and make sure you're on that page. The faith focus, what we're going to focus on in this chapter is what does the gospel story about Jesus and Jairus' daughter tell us? And then our vocabulary this chapter, our faith vocabulary, is synagogue, a building in which Jewish people gather to pray and to read and study the scriptures and the law of God and other teachings of the Jewish religion. Let's read together. I'll read out loud and you follow there. Suffering in the Bible. The Bible story of creation tells us that God created everything and everyone good. God created us to be happy with him and one another here on earth and forever in heaven. God's plan of creation did not include sickness and suffering. Suffering and illness came into the world as a result of our first parents, sin. Some people blame God for the suffering in the world. They sometimes turn away from God. Other people trust in God's great love for them when they suffer. They reach out to God in prayer. We can read many of these prayers in the book of Psalms in the Old Testament. Now, if you have your Bible there, 
the activity they want you to do is look up Psalm 4 in the Bible. Choose a verse to comfort someone who is sick or suffering in some way and write the verse in the space. I'm going to get my Bible. You get your Bible. If you don't have it, listen to my words as I read Psalm 4. And then I'll make a suggestion of what I wrote as a possibility of a verse that might help somebody that's suffering. So I have my Bible here, and I'm going to read it for you. But if you have yours, you should be in the Psalms, and it's Psalm 4, and you can follow while I'm reading it. So it's Psalm 4, Trust in God. For the leader with string in, stringed instruments, a Psalm of David. Answer when I call my saving God. In my troubles, you cleared a way. Show me favor, hear my prayer. How long will you people mock my honor, love what is worthless, chase after lies? Know that the Lord works wonders for the faithful. The Lord hears when I call out. Tremble and do not sin upon your beds, ponder in silence. Offer fitting sacrifice and trust in the Lord. Many say, may we see better times. Lord, show us the light of your face. But you have given my heart more joy than they have when grain and wine abound. In peace, I shall both lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me secure. So you write down one of the lines in this psalm that you feel would be a good verse to help people that are sick and suffering. And if you don't have the words of the psalm there with you, hopefully you heard as I read and maybe am writing that down. What I wrote down was the verse, many say, may we see better times. Lord, show us the light of your face. Now let's go to reading the word of God on page 131. And before we even begin to read, the title is Jesus Heals a Young Girl. But let's look at this picture on the bottom right. You have Jesus holding the hand gently of the little girl that's in her bed. And she must need some type of healing. She's sick. She's suffering. But Jesus is just, you can see in the picture just through their eyes. Their eyes are looking at each other. And in the picture of this image of Jesus comforting this child by just the gentle touch and probably followed by very gentle, caring words. Let's now read this page of the chapter, and it begins, Jesus heals a young girl. People turned to Jesus in times of suffering. One time, Jairus, an official of the synagogue, came to Jesus. Read what happened. And in blue, this is scripture, and it's based on Luke. One day when Jesus and his disciples were entering a town, Jairus came to Jesus. He fell on his knees and begged Jesus to come to his house because his 12-year-old daughter was dying. Jesus went with him, and as they came toward Jairus' home, someone from his house came and said to Jairus, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any longer. On hearing this, Jesus said, Do not be afraid. Just have faith, and your daughter will be saved. Hearing what Jesus said, many people ridiculed him because they knew that the little girl was dead. So Jesus went over to Jairus' daughter, took her by the hand, and called to her, Child, arise. 
The girl immediately arose. We believe and trust in Jesus. We turn to him when we or other people are suffering. And now we can look at that picture even more clearly that it wasn't that Jesus even came to this young child and she was alive, but that he went over and held her hand and brought her to life is the picture and the image that we're looking at. That asks the questions on what did Jairus ask Jesus? So as we read the scripture, Jairus asked for him, Jesus to go to his home because he knew that his daughter was dying and it was if there was something he had belief in Jesus and could there be something that Jesus could do and it said what might you ask Jesus when you or a member of your family is sick so think about that kind of silently or quietly I know when I have a family member or if I am sick or I have a good friend somebody a colleague anybody in my life you know, I always do pray for them. And I do ask our Lord, I say, help them through what they are suffering from. Help them get better. Help them to have trust in you, Lord. How can I be of help to them? Help heal them. So these may be also things that you do when people or even yourself are um, feeling sick or you're suffering from something. Let's turn the page, and Father Virginus is going to now uh, understanding the Word of God and our faith and trust in God on page 132. Understanding the Word of God. Faith and trust in God. Jairus' neighbors and friends did not have the same faith in Jesus as Jairus did. They tried to convince Jairus that he should leave Jesus alone. That is exactly what Jesus does not want us to do. The Holy Spirit invites us to reach out to Jesus when we are sick or suffering in any way. We are to trust and believe in Jesus as Jairus did. We pray for ourselves and for others who are suffering, who are sick or suffering. We trust that we are never left alone in our suffering. Here is an activity for you. Look at the photos of the people reaching out to people who are suffering. In the space, draw or write about yourself helping someone who is suffering in some way. Look at the photos. There are a couple of them. Um, there is a blank place for you to write or draw yourself, uh, helping someone. Uh, but there is also, we see these two girls in the posture of prayer praying for those who are suffering is one way that we um, help others we help those who are suffering by praying you also see the old man who is being um, given maybe medication or water or some form of helpful fluid uh, in the, one of the photos that is also one way of helping those who are suffering and you see uh, the doctor um, helping the doctors, maybe a doctor and a nurse, helping um, a child, maybe with a fracture or something. Um, that is also another way of helping those who are suffering. And I don't know what you have drawn or what you have written, but uh, Mrs. Steva uh, has done the activity and um, would like you to see what she's done. She said, I help needy people by donating meetings and socks. She 
donate socks to help needy people, especially now that the weather is getting cold. One way to help those who are suffering is to donate socks and mittens. Now let us go to the next page, which is Our Church Makes a Difference. We are going to learn about St. John of God. Christians have always shared the good news of God's caring love with people who are suffering. John of God was one of those Christians. John was born in Portugal in 1495. He served his country as a soldier, worked as a shepherd, and at times sold books. In 1538, things changed for John. After listening to a sermon, he decided to dedicate his life to caring for people who were sick. Soon, others joined him, and he opened a hospital. Today, more than 40,000 followers of St. John of God care for people care for people who are sick and suffering all over the world. The church has named John of God a saint. He is the patron saint of hospitals, people who are sick, and nurses. His feast day is celebrated on March the 8th. What does the example of St. John of God and his followers teach us about God's love? As we reflect on that question, um, you see the stained glass with the image of St. John of God helping, caring, loving, and caring a man who was sick. And I think one of the things that his example and the example of his followers teach us is to carry God's loving and caring presence into the lives of those who suffer or those who are sick. Okay, now let us go to our Catholic identity, Catholic hospitals. The word hospital comes from two Latin words meaning House for guests, house for guests. The first Christian hospitals cared for weary travelers and the sick. Today, there are more than 2,000 Catholic hospitals in North America and South America. Mrs. Steva will now tell us what difference faith can make in our lives. What difference does faith make in my life? When you have helped a member of your family who was sick, when you did, you were doing the same work that Jesus did. The Holy Spirit helped you be a sign of God's caring love for that person. When you feel sick, don't you feel good when somebody in your life a family member or a friend or somebody that you know, maybe a teacher, a priest, or someone, a neighbor, just comes to you and either visits you or brings you something um, that's really good for your body while you're sick to eat, or just wants to talk with you, maybe just calls you. Those things make you feel good. And if you do those to others, that comforts them and makes them feel good. And suddenly people start to feel more that they're loved than sick or that they're suffering. Even if it's a moment of love, that's what they feel. So it says, list some of the things you and other young people can do to help people who are sick or are suffering. So it's just an um, activity where you'll list. You can use a couple words or one word if you want to design anything. So we're gonna have you stop the video, but of course, we'll give you some time to do it, and then you're to redo the video 
and then we'll finish our chapter. So we'll give you a little bit of time and make it nice and bright. It's just ways that you and then maybe your friends can help people that you've been learning about or that you do already as a person or your family or you do to each other. Okay, boys and girls, wish I could see what you did. I wrote just one words or two words and I just kind of drew maybe little symbols next to some of them. But the most important thing I feel with all my heart, hopefully you do, is pray for that person. You're now getting older and you might hear people say the power of prayer, it works. And I can tell you I'm much older than you and I have definitely seen in my life and experienced the power of prayer in many, many situations. So prayer, pray, is the first thing that you should do for anyone that you know is sick or is suffering, even for yourself. I know recently when I even had to have an extensive back surgery, I prayed for myself. I didn't feel that was selfish. I needed to tell and ask the Lord to just help me heal and be open to whatever I was supposed to do or my doctors told me to do. Make meals. So that's wonderful. People, you know, soup is always the go-to, but people enjoy meals. They don't feel strong enough to make a meal for themselves or sometimes something very special, a meal, just makes you feel better. Maybe you don't have that certain type of meal all the time and someone decides to make a meal. So you could do that, make meals. Make a get well card. A lot of people just feel a lot of joy from seeing a, a handmade, knowing it's from you and your friends. And it, it means a lot to them because it's your words or your drawings or whatever you put on the card. And it just makes it special. It's not something, though it's nice to go to the store and get one that's already made, but it's always a little bit more special to people. And when you're not feeling well, that can bring a lot of joy to someone. Read to them. Sometimes if you can go and visit, a lot of people just enjoy you just sitting there and reading anything that maybe even you enjoy or something that you know that they enjoy listening to. You could even read a few scripture readings that are just delightful for them to hear. So read to them. And always flowers, as you know, always brighten somebody day. And in the picture, it looks like the woman is visiting the sick person in the bed, but there's those bright tulips right there next to that drink of water. And I'm sure that that person probably brought those bright flowers because you've probably had flowers brought to you or it's always nice to see beautiful nature because it makes people feel alive, like nature is growing and they see beautiful flowers. This week it says under my faith choice, when I hear or read about someone or some people who are suffering, I will be a sign of God's love. I kind of think this is easy. You write what you want, but really I would like you to write, I will pray. And that way, you know this week, you're able to do that. If you hear of someone suffering or you know about something, and you know what? We have a list that's in our bulletin of sick people in our parish. And even if you just say, without looking at the names of those people, I want to pray for the people at Resurrections Parish. Lord, just heal them or help them. That just this week would be a beautiful thing to do. Now, Father Virginus is gonna join us and we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray, it says, Lord, hear our prayer on page 135. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. In a prayer of intercession, we pray for other people. Pray this prayer of intercession for people who are sick, or suffering. In this prayer, I am the leader, and Mrs. Stever and you are all. God of love, you are always present with us. 
bless and I'm gonna put in a dad that we just heard was sick Joshi with your love and you can put someone that you know is either sick or suffering so bless Joshi with your love send your Holy Spirit to help him or her believe and trust in your love in this time of sickness we ask this through Christ our Lord amen amen okay boys and girls now let's go back to we remember so we're gonna give you time but not turn off the video okay you remember the story about Jesus and Jairus and his sick daughter so what they want you to do is just in your words but using the words in the box here so you need to use Jesus, Jairus, daughter, faith, sick, and neighbors. And write down, using all those words, just kind of retell the gospel story that we read about from Luke. I put... And you can kind of listen to my words too, but take your pencil and just start writing. Jairus had faith in Jesus. His neighbors said Jesus could not help his daughter who was sick. Jesus healed her. Jairus trust in Jesus but now you can uh, write a few sentences of your own in your own words but use those words to help you remember we have the Bible has many stories that describe how people deal with their sickness and suffering Jairus believed and trusted that Jesus would heal his daughter we are to reach out to Jesus in faith and trust when we are sick or suffering. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to the very last page of this chapter, so get your mom or dad, or if there's another adult there, an older sibling, that can at least close out our chapter. It's actually chapter 15, and it's with my family. So parents, read the page more thoroughly this beautiful picture, obviously, of a very young, gentle hand and a flower with an elderly's hand. And it just really does say it all of just what can help or comfort someone that is suffering and just see the gentleness of our young person. But in sharing God's word, it says, read together the Bible story in Luke and then emphasize that we can turn to Jesus when we or other people are suffering. Praying, you could pray the beautiful prayer, the intercessional prayer, on page 135. I really recommend it because there are people that are in your lives that you could pray for, and as a family, you could get together and then read the prayer, but say those words in your heart and out loud of different people that are in your lives, in your neighborhood, or in your family. And also, add the people of resurrection Catholic Parish too because we have many that are asking us for their prayers and then just do that this week as a family in making a difference it has a couple opportunities or perhaps you know one that would be very helpful for what the children have just learned about their Catholic faith and suffering and their trust in God when they're sick but I highlight name some ways that your family can reach out to others who are suffering and then choose one thing that you will do as a family this week. So I kind of already gave you a hint of praying for people this week, but maybe there's something else that you could do as a family. Visit, make a card, make a phone call, whatever. So Father Virginist, let's close this chapter as we do always with a prayer or blessing from you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for your time. 
We hope you enjoyed this session. Enjoy the rest of your week. God bless you and your families. God bless you.